Have you ever wanted to play around with, you know, maybe building a Python web application or running one in production, but you didn't want to take the code and maybe put it in a virtual machine or something like that? You may be thinking, well, how can I containerize this? It's absolutely possible, and it's probably a lot easier than you think. In this video, we're going to learn how to take a Python web API, and we're going to containerize it and run it to confirm that it actually works. Now, the really cool thing about this is you could pretty much take any Python code that you want and do the same exact thing. It could be two lines of Python code, or it could be a hundred lines of Python code. Totally up to you. We're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right in. Let's check it out. Let's take a look at the Python web API that we're going to be containerizing. So on line one, I'm going to be importing flask with a few different functions from flask. On line four, I'm going to be calling a variable that's going to be called PyWeb, and then I'm going to be initiating Flask. On line seven, I'm going to be using a decorator, and this decorator is going to have a function for route, and then that route is just going to go to the home page. That's why you see that slash right there on line seven. So this decorator is actually coming from this flask initiation right here. So that's why I'm able to do at PyWeb because the initiation is from the PyWeb variable. Next on line eight, I'm gonna be defining my function and this is gonna be a really straightforward function. It's the web page is literally just gonna return hello YouTube friends. On line 12, I'm gonna be running the Python web API and I'm gonna be doing it over host 0000, 000 and then port 5000. So you may be wondering, like, why am I not doing 127.0.0.1 to run it locally? I absolutely can do this. That's perfectly fine. The reason why I typically use 0.0.0.0 is because if I'm running this in the cloud, that's what it's going to be expecting. Because on the back end of like Azure or AWS or something, they're handling the networking for you. So because of that, it's expecting 0.0.0.0 so it can kind of play around and do what it needs to do from a networking perspective. If you specify an IP address, there's gonna be no dynamic hosting here. But if you wanna run this locally, you absolutely can just change the host to 127.0.0.1, okay? So I'm gonna open up my requirements here, and the only requirement that I need is the Flask library. The runtime, I'm just gonna be using Python 3.7.6. Realistically, this isn't needed, but you can add in a runtime if you want to. So now at this point, I'm just gonna create a new file and it's gonna be called Docker file, okay? And then now I can start adding in what my Docker file is going to look like. So from, which is gonna be the base image, I'm gonna say Python latest. So there's a Docker image strictly for Python and that's the one we're gonna be using. Next, we're gonna use run so we can create a new directory so mkdir build we're going to name this directory build we're going to ensure that the working directory is build because that's going to be where all of our code is going to go you'll see that in just a second i'm going to say copy so what i want to do is i want to copy everything in pyweb which is this directory right here that's where my python application is i want to copy all of that into the build directory because that's going to be my working directory Next, I want to run my requirements on the Python Docker image. So I'm going to say run pip install minus r requirements dot txt. Okay, so again, my requirements are just Flask. And then finally, I'm going to use CMD. And what I'm going to do with CMD is I'm going to execute my Python web API. So essentially what this is doing is Every time the container runs, the first thing that's gonna happen from an executable standpoint is this application is gonna run. So I'm gonna say Python, comma, double quotes again, pyweb.py, okay? So essentially this is, oops, let me put the space here. So essentially what this is right here, this command, it's the same thing as saying Python, pyweb.py to run the application locally but instead I wanna run it in the container, of course. So with that, let's go ahead and LS. We can see our Docker file here. And I actually have some instructions for everybody. If you wanna go back, I have this instructions.md here, and I'm gonna literally run it the same way we see in the instructions to ensure this is actually gonna work for everybody. 
So I'm going to run docker build minus T and this minus T is for a tag. So I'm going to tag the docker image PyWeb, and then the dot right here is just saying, look in the current directory for the Docker file. You go ahead and I'm going to run that. And then as we can see, the Docker build is successful. We can do Docker image LS and we can see our PyWeb right here. Okay. I'm going to clear my screen. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to run the container. So I'm going to run Docker run here and minus P for the ports. So the incoming and outgoing or the ports that everyone else is going to see and the ports that the internal Docker networking is going to see should both be 5,000. I'm going to do TID. TID means a TTY console, interactive for I and detach for D. And then I'm going to say the Docker image name, which is PyWeb, because that's what we tagged it as. And go ahead and I'm going to run that. Okay, so now at this point we can see Docker container LS. Our container is now running. So if we want to actually see this container running, we can do the same thing, except we'll take out TID. So we'll do that. And then our container will actually be running inside of the container from our terminal here. We're not detaching. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that. And as we can see, it's already allocated. So what I could do is I can actually just remove this container. I'll say Docker RM, the container ID, and then I'll put force here. So if I do docker container ls again, we can see the container isn't running. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear my screen. And then I'm going to go back to that docker run without the TID. Go ahead and I'm going to run that. And then as we can see, our containerized Python web API is successfully running. So with that, that's how you can take any Python application and containerize it. Thank you so much for watching.